Complexity is only one of the things that tends to evolve. Um, I think one of the most powerful forces leading to the evolution of complexity is what I call arms races, evolutionary arms races. Uh, living things are adapted not just to the, to the climate, to the weather, they're adapted to each other. And for example, prey animals are adapted to run away from predators, predators are adapted to chase after prey. As each side in the, in the arms race becomes more sophisticated, the other side has to become more sophisticated too. So as lions run faster, antelopes have to run faster, and vice versa. Complexity of the brain, complexity of the nervous system, complexity of the skeleton, of the muscular system, all these things are devices for the, the better prosecution of one side of the arms race or another. It's not all arms races, but I, I think arms races is, is a very important part, especially if you want to talk about complexity. Mostly living things are surprisingly well designed, designed in quotes of course. Uh, there are famous examples of obvious bad design, like the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, the, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a nerve that in mammals starts in the brain, it ends up at the larynx, the voice box, but instead of going straight to the larynx, it goes down into the chest, loops around one of the big arteries coming out of the heart, and goes then straight back up again. Now in a giraffe, which I've actually assisted in the dissection of to show this, that's an enormously long digression. I mean, it's a digression of many yards, well, at least many feet. Um, and um, I've actually seen this nerve, it goes sailing straight past the larynx from, from the brain, within, within inches of the larynx, within about two inches of the larynx, it goes straight down into the chest and straight back up again. Now that is because of historical accident in fish, from which we are descended. Um, in our fish ancestors, the most direct route was south of the, the equivalent of, the, of that artery. And as evolution gradually lengthened the neck, each marginal fractional increase in the length of the digression got a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, until in the case of the giraffe, it is many feet long. My experience of awe what you call transcendence, the spiritual experience, motivates me the whole time. That's, that's what I do science for. It's why I try to communicate science to, to other people. Other, I mean, some scientists are motivated by the fact that it's useful. They may be searching for a cure for malaria or something of that sort, and that's great too. But for me, it's always the spiritual sense of wonder that drives me on.